you have to be uh, skeptical. I mean, it's, it's obviously, these are like the biggest claims ever. You know, if someone tells you that, uh, you know, there's a spider in the garage, you don't need to go and check. Someone tells you there's there's an mm-hmm. elephant in the garage, then you might need a little bit more evidence that there's actually <laughs> an elephant in the garage. And this is like a giant herd of elephants in the garage. So we're going to need some actual evidence of this. What's up, you scholars of enlightenment? Dr. Sam Gregson, particle physicist here again. I hope you've had a brilliant week and have a fantastic weekend in store. Well, what a bizarre week it's been in the news. This week, the independent military-focused news website, The Debrief, posted an article with the astonishing title, Intelligence Officials Say US Has Retrieved Craft of Non-Human Origin. David Charles Grush, a former intelligence official in the US military, who was intimately involved in the study of unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAP, and related US government task forces, has provided sworn testimony to Congress regarding alleged deep covert US government programs. Grush claims that the US government and allies possess retrieved, intact, and partially intact craft of non human origin, and that they have been recovering concealing and studying these craft for decades. Grosh claims that the analysis has determined that the objects retrieved are of exotic origin based on the vehicle morphologies and material science testing and the possession of unique atomic arrangements and radiological signatures. The information, he says, has been illegally withheld from Congress and the UAP task force. Grush's claims have been backed up by other active and retired intelligence officials with knowledge of these programs. And the House of Representatives will now hold hearings to assess Grush's claims. So, is alien disclosure at hand as many UFO enthusiasts would have us believe? Or is this just the latest round of innuendo and misinformation and another nothing burger? To help me answer that question, and dig a little deeper into this astonishing week of UAP news, I'm joined by two phenomenal special guests. Firstly, UAP sceptic and debunker, Mick West. Mick is a British science writer, sceptical investigator, and retired video game programmer. He's the creator of the websites Contrail Science and Metabunk, and he investigates and debunks pseudoscientific claims and conspiracy theories such as those of chemtrails and UFOs. He has appeared in various media, including CBS, BBC, CNN, Radio New Zealand, and Scientific American, as an expert conspiracy analyst and science communicator. He's also appeared on the Joe Rogan podcast. Secondly, I'm joined by navigation and sensor expert, Dr. Ramsey Farah. Ramsey is an expert in electronics, navigation, and sensor fusion. He is a by fellow of Queen's College, Cambridge, and the CTO, President, and Director of Focal Point Positioning Limited. He is a real life James Bond Q, according to Top Gear magazine. So, who better to help me work out what the hell is going on? So, Mick, we've heard a lot from and about a guy called David Grush this week. Could you give us a a brief rundown of what all the hubbub is about? Because it's all over the media. Yeah, David Grush is a UFO whistleblower. And he is someone who worked uh, in the military and in the intelligence community at the National Reconnaissance Office, which is like stuff like spy satellites and whatnot. He also worked as a liaison for the NRO uh, at the UAP task force when when that was a thing a, a while back. And uh, at some point, he became convinced that uh, UFOs are actually alien craft. And he decided at some point to blow the whistle. And now he's kind of been ooh, almost like rolled out, I say, I would say, and that he's been presented to the public in a kind of carefully orchestrated way that has been obviously planned for a few months. And he's told us that uh, the US government has... Uh, crashed alien craft, some of which were landed, and some of which had bodies in, uh, one of which was recovered in 1933, another which the size of a football field. And uh, he knows all of this because some people told him this, people that he trusts. 
And uh, yeah, I think he says he's, he's seen some documents, but he didn't work on any of these these programs. Apparently, there's these crash retrieval programs. He didn't work on. Uh, uh, he didn't actually see any of these craft, but he assures us that it is true. So now we're trying to figure out what's going on, and apparently, he's going to go to Congress. So this is this is apparently a decorated person, someone who's worked in the military, has been presented as as highly credible. Has he actually presented any evidence? What what is the nature of the evidence that he's presented? Anything we can well, see or touch? No, there's no no evidence being presented, and it's all being kind of uh, wrapped up in a kind of a careful package, kind of a legalistic framework where he's he's made a a whistleblower complaint, uh, and he says that he has been retaliated against because of his you know plans to to blow the whistle on this. Mm-hmm. And he's concerned for his safety, and uh, and he's he's done the complaint in such a way that it makes it kind of difficult for people to interrogate him because he could be accused of, uh, you know, pressuring the witness and things like that. And I, and I think he's done all this on you know legal and strategic strategic advice. But yeah, he's not presented any evidence. He's simply said that uh, people. I've told him these things. He hasn't. He hasn't got any evidence. Uh, but yeah, also there are other people said that looked into his background, and they say that there are other witnesses who are also testifying to Congress. But none of those witnesses have come forward, so we, the public, don't know anything about them. Mm-hmm. And Congress hasn't told us anything about them either. But uh, it seems like things are going to happen one way or the other. And and what is the what is the nature of the evidence that he's talking about? So he's talked about documents, he's talked about talking to people. What what sort of things has he mentioned? He talked about he said there's a number of alien vehicles that have been recovered. Did he talk about bizarre atomic ratios and things like this? I I yeah, any, any science number, that he's come out with that we can maybe well, get there's a number of through? there's a number of kind of specific things that he's mentioned. Uh, I mean the 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 first thing I'd, I'd say that he mentioned, that which is really interesting, is that there are, are bodies of mm. the pilots of the craft. Mm. And, you know, obviously that's kind of a science type thing. If you've got a body that's not human mm. flying a craft, then there you go. It's proof that aliens are flying craft. But he was asked about uh, what evidence he had that these were aliens. And the, the first thing that he went to was uh, strange isotopic ratios. It was the very bit, first bit thing. There's a disconnect there between. Massive alien craft that maybe we could talk about and, you know, a little bit of metal and its atomic ratio seems, uh, you know, a bit of a climb down. You you would think there'd be a huge amount of of evidence that was quite obvious on its face that that these were alien craft. I mean, they're they're not the least of which, in fact, the greatest of which would be that they had alien bodies inside of them. But, you know, apparently that's not that important. So what he talks about are these isotopic ratios. And isotopic ratios is a thing that's been in in UFO culture and UFO mythology as a, a kind of a hopeful bit of evidence for, for some time. And it's basically you know, the isotopic ratio of, of a metal is just the mix of the two types of that metal. metal metals and lots of elements come in uh, isotopes. So you've got like one version of the metal and another version of the metal, different number of neutrons uh, in, in the atoms that make up that metal. And on Earth, they come in fairly specific ratios. Uh, you, you'll generally find the metals in these these fairly specific ratios. But you can alter those ratios. You can you can mix together. You can purify isotopes and mix them together. So you can you can engineer them. And he said that you know that these are isotopic ratios that must have been engineered. But that's not evidence of aliens. Mm. That's evidence of somebody's mixed together two <laughs> two isotopes, or perhaps they did the test wrong, or perhaps this is just a naturally occurring isotope ratio that they haven't discovered before. Uh, so it's not really very good evidence. And then you know, the thing you have there on screen is this uh, this this layered piece of metal, which is a small a small bit of metal, which is a uh, alternating layers of magnesium and bismuth. And he mentioned um, the yeah, strange structures of high atomic numbers. Now, bismuth has a, a high atomic number; it's like eighty-six or something like that. Uh, it's relatively high. I mean, it's not like you know, it's not like element one fifteen or something like that. But you could consider it to be high, and it is considered to be a heavy metal. Uh, and this is a strange structure; it's alternating layers of magnesium bis- and bismuth. But it's something that's just been knocking around in the UFO community for a very long time. It was, 
I think Linda Moulton Howe had it. She's the woman who's obsessed <laughs> with with cattle mutilation. Yeah. Uh, and Tom DeLong, I think, bought it off her at some point, and then he sold it to somebody. Possibly, possibly sold it to the government. I don't know how that works, but you know, he he he. Oh no, I think he sold it to his own company. Like he acquired it, then he sold it back to his own company for thirty thousand dollars. It's all very strange. But anyway, it's it's just a bit of UFO mythology that's been knocking around. And there's no evidence that what he's talking about is any any different from this or these mm. other little bits of metal that have been knocking around. So he just sounds like he's kind of repeating stories yeah. that have existed in UFO myth- mythology that you know, somehow he's heard from people and they've been repeated as true stories and somehow he he's believing them and now he's he's going to blow the whistle on Congress. But I'm afraid, you know, he's probably going to backfire on him when uh, when they figure out what the actual claims actually are but i guess we'll see i think i think there's a couple of things in there which i which i noticed from what he was saying one is exactly as you said is that i noticed that a lot of the claims particularly when he goes into any science they do seem to be very ufa law type type things that he's saying or just you know you would see in a movie where they're like you know this is an element that we haven't seen on the periodic table it's so high up in the periodic table they seem to be very, I don't know, almost pop culture references. He talks about this um, this craft from the 1933s, uh, 1933 that was bell-shaped. I know that yeah. this Dick Locker has been hanging around in Ancient Aliens, and I've seen it. I know this isn't exactly the one they would have talked about on Ancient Aliens from the Nazis, but it, it's a similar type thing. So he seems to be talking about a lot of kind of folklore things, doesn't he? And, exactly, and you'll, you'll yeah. know about those having been in this community for quite a while. Yeah, and the dig locker is is kind of like a legendary like yeah, you know, the idea that there was the Nazis were working on some kind of UFO technology. But what he actually talk, talking about wasn't dig locker. It was uh well perhaps a related thing, but apparently in 1933 a bell-shaped UFO uh, landed or crashed in Italy and was was captured by the the Mussolini uh, regime. And I don't know what they did with it, stuck it in a warehouse for a while. And then the, the Americans invade Italy and uh, they they take this bell-shaped UFO back to the United States. Now, all of that is is basically ufology legend, mm-hmm. except for the last bit, which he seems to have added, which was probably speculation anyway, that the, the Americans took this this bell-shaped UFO. Otherwise, where has it gone? You know, obviously, it's, it went somewhere if it, if it ever existed, so... That seems like the natural conclusion. But you know, he's claiming that in 1944, or is that like 79 years ago, mm. uh, the Americans had a crashed UFO and they've been secretly reverse engineering it ever since. Mm. And then apparently every few years or so, another UFO crashes. And these UFOs seem to have very ga- very bad guidance systems. <laughs> like they're crashing all the time. You know, these are things that have flown here from Alpha Centura or wherever, or Zeta Reticula. Um, or perhaps have been built in a secret alien base or underneath the Pacific. Or come through a wormhole or something. Yes, or it's these are super advanced craft. I mean, yeah, we're, we're supposed to believe like you know they got here because it's a civilization that's millions of years more advanced than us, and yet they crash all the time. They crash more than Tesla's crash. It's uh, <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but you know this is this is the story, and you wouldn't have the story without these UFOs crashing. So it's it's kind of like you have to kind of uh, accept this if you want to believe the story. And, and this is what I have to say. We, you know, we're having a laugh and, and a joke about it. Some people have said, you know, people are, are not taking this series. They don't want it to go forward. That's not the case. This this can go no. forward. They can look into these things. That's absolutely fine. But you have to have some skepticism. The, the default position on this has to be. No. Yeah. Show me the evidence, even, please. Even the uh, the credulous journalists who first yeah. brought the story to our attention, we're going to get are, onto those as well. Skeptical. Later. Yeah. Okay. Well, I won't talk about them now. Then, but yes, <laughs> you have to. You have to be uh, skeptical. I mean, it's it's obviously these are like the biggest claims ever. Mm. You know, if someone tells you that uh, you, you know there's a spider in the garage, you don't need to go and check. Someone tells you there's there's an mm-hmm. elephant in the garage, then you might need a little bit more evidence that there's actually <laughs> an elephant in the garage. And this is like a giant herd of elephants in the garage. So we're going to need some actual evidence of this, yeah. and that well, evidence the... should exist. It shouldn't be that hard to get for the for Congress. You had a couple of points on the science here, didn't you, Ramsey, about the uh, the craft coming in and also potentially the uh, the 
the isotopic ratios? Well, well the, the first thing I was going to pick on, I, I didn't know about that size of a football field thing until you said it just now. And that, again, like, you know, some scraps of metal having full, full, full strange isotopic ratios versus talking about the DNA or the organs inside, you know, a, a, an alien body. But a craft the size of a football field, there's an entire story behind that, surely, right? There's like, yeah, where and how did they move it to? <laughs> um, what what was its propulsion system like? What was its shielding like? What was the interior like? You'd have a lot mm -hmm. of questions about a football field sized thing, like the cruise liner of of alien spacecraft. And so it sounds like that was kind of just dropped in conversation, never mentioned again. Is that right? Yeah, he didn't give any details. Uh, I think he was kind of asked about the types of craft that he'd seen. And he said one was even the size of a football field. Now, to be fair, he might have been talking about a sighting of a craft because that's the type of thing that people often say when they, they see something in the sky, oh, it's the size of a football field because people have no conception of how to judge size of things and people often have, have illusions. But it sounded like he was talking about a an actual crashed craft or a landed craft. He talks about landed craft as well. He says that uh, oh, one of the other people who has you know, come forward behind the scenes as reportedly, this is very kind of third hand, said that some of the craft crashed some of them landed and the people got out and walked away <laughs> and it's like i mean what how do you did, did you take photos of this 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 event i mean what actually happens and you know where where is this craft now and how big was it and what kind of truck did you use to move it even the smaller craft i imagine are uh, somewhat substantial if they're flying around in the atmosphere unless we've only got like 18 inch spheres and football field sized triangles. And those are the two types of craft that we have, but uh, yeah. it doesn't seem that way. Sounds like he's been playing too much XCOM to me. That's uh, what's but going on, but. It's certainly why it's so hard to believe that it's anything other than just the usual stories again. Like having a tiny bit of information about loads of unrelated, highly varied stuff isn't useful. If the guy had talked for an hour on great details about one of these things and and actually passed on a lot of interesting useful knowledge then it would be much more convincing but yeah uh, i think partly he's not doing that just because he doesn't have any first hand uh, information yeah he he only really has what people have told him and uh yeah it, the, people are saying like what he is doing is telling congress where to look mm. He's saying, if you go to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and ask about this program, then they'll tell you that this is an alien reverse engineering program. You know, I don't think that's what's going to happen, but that's that's kind of the narrative so far. So do you think this is a gamble? Do you think this is that there are people who genuinely believe it must be the case that surely there's a hangar somewhere with some stuff in it that they hope yeah. is there, they think is there, and if they can just create enough noise that puts enough pressure that you know, we'll find out one way or the other. And it's just all trying to just keep push on the, pushing on the sort of hope that there really is a crash retrieval program, but no one actually yeah. has proof that there is. I, I do. And I think this is, this, what we're, where this story is coming from, you know, it's, it's not just Dave Grush. There's a whole bunch of people behind it. And all these people, all the people behind him are all people who believe that aliens are visiting us. So they, they think that there's a crash retrieval program. They think that flying uh, objects are actually alien craft or some type of uh, non-human intelligence, perhaps from another dimension, uh, perhaps from the future, perhaps like they're inside the earth or something like that. You know, these are all things that have been suggested by these people. Uh, and you know the the journalists who broke the story. They they are people who believe in in UFOs. Mm -hmm. The people who are parading uh, Grush around and introducing him to people are people who believe that UFOs are aliens. Mm -hmm. So it's people with a very strong uh, preconceived idea of what's going on, who are basically trying to prove to the world that that is going on. Mm -hmm. They're trying to expose what they think to be correct, uh, but they're using the most tenuous mm -hmm. evidence. And uh, I don't think it's going to, I don't know how it's going to end, but uh, I, don't, I, I very much <laughs> doubt that anything significant will come out of it other than perhaps uh, some reforms, uh, because I think it looks like we do have people 
in the military and the intelligence community who believe these things. Yeah. And I think there's there's a reason for that. Yeah. I don't think the reason is that these things are true. I think it's that the uh, the standard operating procedures of the military and the government and the intelligence community are such uh, such excessive secrecy and such compartmentalized secrecy that it actually creates an environment, a kind of crippled epistemology in which these weird theories can grow and, and fester. And people will start thinking that they're working on UFO programs when they're actually just working on like a crashed Russian satellite or a recovered uh, part of a, a, a Chinese jet or something like that. And they get convinced of it and they tell other people and they convince other people and then we end up here. And I want to come on to some of those, some of those people later, but just regarding what he's been saying. So we, you know, we talked about this is all secondhand stuff. The default position is to be sceptical about this. Although the guy seems trustworthy, you know, we want to see the evidence. A couple of things that that struck me is, first of all, they've sort of ring fenced it to say, oh, we can't show you the evidence because it's all classified. So it's it's almost kind of hermetically sealed. The excuses are already lined up as to why you can't present the evidence, which which seems to be very, very much planned. And uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say too much because I don't exactly know what's happened, but it seems very convenient that you can't present evidence, but you should just trust the guy. I I do think it's kind of carefully being done. Uh, I mean, one of the people involved is, is, is a lawyer. Um, uh, Sheen, I can't remember his first name now. Uh, but he's you know, a famous lawyer. He was he worked on the Pentagon Papers case years and years ago, and, but he's done a lot of UFO stuff recently. And then apparently there's another big lawyer. And I think they're advising him to to you know, cover uh, uh, his uh, his uh, potential you know, culpability and liability if things go wrong. But you know, he, he can't tell anything that's false. So he can only say you know, what, what he knows and he can't release any classified information. Mm. So, but it really hampers like what the public can, can actually uh, see. However, you know, Congress isn't, uh, doesn't actually have those restrictions. Congress and, you know, cert- and certain committees mm. can actually investigate this. Yeah, He has a high level security clearance, but he's, he's 36. He's not like, a, you know, this, this grizzled old veteran who has been doing it all of his life. Uh, and he left. He left the intelligence community like a month or two ago. Started working as a realtor, uh, which I think is a career he quickly gave up to mm. to pursue this type of thing. Uh, but yeah, you know, he's he's just a relatively young person in the intelligence community with a high level security clearance. And there must be thousands, thousands of people who have the similar security clearance, if not higher, well, definitely higher. And Congress can just go get a few of those and ask them what's going on. Or get a few of those and tell them to investigate what's going on. It's not that complicated. If if they've given them the receipts and said this this program is a yeah. UFO program, they just got to summon the people who are responsible for that program and uh, and grill them on it. They got to like say, well, let's go, let's go to Wright Patterson, let's go into room like seven five three on uh, you know sub basement two and see what's behind the filing cabinet. Uh, but you know, it's um, hopefully it's going to happen. But I don't know if we'll learn the results of it because probably what we're actually talking about is programs that are actually highly classified because they're reverse engineering programs of foreign technology it also another thing that struck me is is this suggests an absolutely massive conspiracy doesn't it across oh, you talk you talked about 79 huge, years the biggest so, yeah so yeah. so eight decades multiple countries in the uh in the the in the the debrief story it talked about multiple craft taken in multiple countries across academia across the military across government across subcontractors who are working on this thing and scientists who are working on these things and yet all we've had over eight decades is blurry photos and secondhand um secondhand testimony it, it just it doesn't seem to add up from any sensible perspective. How do you think, yeah. feel about that? No, it's it's it, obviously it would be a huge conspiracy. It kind of reminds me of like the nine eleven conspiracy theories, which I know, I know the UFO people will scream hearing me say that. Yeah. But it, it's the magnitude of the cover up that they're talking about. They are actually suggesting this particular conspiracy theory. So the magnitude of the cover up is a kind of a similar type of thing. Mm. Like the the you know when we had nine eleven. 
we had uh, like yeah, half the FBI was working on it for at least two years afterwards. And then a lot of them were still working on it like 10 years afterwards. Massive investigation into it. And then no conspiracy was was found. And yet people still believe that there was a conspiracy. Uh, I guess this this UFO thing will be like, yeah, it doesn't have the half the FBI investigating it, but now we've got Congress looking into it. It's going to be very, very difficult to hide. But looking back over history, the number of people that must have been involved in this mm. would be huge because yeah. you've essentially got the, – the idea is that the government's been reverse engineering technology, feeding it in dribs and drabs to to the defense industry to, to use in the, their weapons over the years as they figure stuff out, and that all – the other major powers are doing the same thing. And then all the other countries either are doing it or they, they're going to have to know about it. You can't like keep something that like that secret from everybody. If like all these different countries are doing it, you know, Russia has to keep it secret. China has to keep it secret. Britain has to keep it secret. You know, whichever other countries uh, are working on it has to keep it secret. If UFOs are crashing, you know, they're not going to restrict themselves to just crashing in the United States, Russia, and Canada. Yeah. They're going to be crashing all over the place. So what happens when a, like a, yeah. a, a UFO crashes in Chad? Like, uh, does the, do the Americans send a, an elite strike team that have been waiting in the, in the wings and pick it up? You know, <laughs> why doesn't this, this crash thing appear on TV? It's, you know, it's, it's, the, there's so many questions here. There's so little that actually makes sense here that like you i think everyone really has to suspend their belief until we get more information and if if not like you know call it what it is which is quite ridiculous sounding story coming from a seemingly authoritative source for some reason they said yeah. uh, they send eric weinstein and his uh you know, <laughs> geometric unity response team the girt that's right that's who goes in ramsey i yeah, thought you had some you had some comments about the 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 potential for keeping this under wraps like that because you you've done some yeah. sensitive work in the past obviously we won't go too much into that well, well just well there's a there's a few things i mean certainly um the quickest way to lose your security clearance is tell someone you've got a security clearance i mean that that's always struck me as fascinating about this particular ensemble of people who are constantly going on about their ndas and and, and stuff but anyway um this this aspect of of kind of the international global agreements to keep it all quiet and stuff. I mean, if you if you consider the big leaks that have had huge impacts, like Snowden, Chelsea Manning and stuff, how has there never been the equivalent in this community, right? Someone who gathers all the data together, leaves the country, exposes it all, and is the most famous person on the entire planet um, for doing this in the way that, you know, Edward Snowden is hugely famous and, and renowned for what he's done. And there's there's never been anything like that, and and it's hard to understand why it happens in some of the other aspects of secret information, but not this most you know important thing that would ever be revealed ever in the history of the human race. Um, and spying is going on all the time. So within like a couple of years of the F thirty five program beginning. Uh, it was established that uh, China had basically got hold of all of the F-35 information and they launched their own um, fighter that had various bits and pieces that had been directly cloned from it and stuff like that. And not only am I intrigued as to how there's never been a Snowden-esque leak, but um, just spying and espionage would, would, would have captured some of this information if it existed into other countries and then it's, as you've said, Mick, those other countries would have to also be just as interested in keeping this particular thing secret and not preventing it leaking via some janitor or some intern or some other um, thing. And the, the other countries that get hold of the information one way or the other are less and less likely to look after it. Like you said, the, uh, the Shetland Islands and the Isle of Man and Monaco <laughs> don't really have the same sorts of levels of... Um, protection of information going on within their establishments as the USA does. And so, yeah, I, I, I find yeah. it very hard to believe that between um, leaking from a, you know, a moral compass character or spying and theft, how this has managed to, to not have been leaked by now in, in, a, in a true manner of like, here's loads of real information. Um, we're still waiting for it to happen. Uh, yeah, I think 
Go on, so it's like comment on that. Like the, I think that you got to look at it in the kind of the history of the geopolitical situation as well. It's not like we're the same world now that we were uh, at the end of World War II, which is when this this type of thing is supposed to have started. You know, countries have changed. Uh, the Soviet Union uh, broke up uh, into separate countries, and Russia, and you know, China went through the Cultural Revolution. And these are all things that happened, you know, kind of after World War II. So it, it and various other countries have changed changed regimes. It's not it's not as if we've had this steady state of world leaders who all have this cozy agreement that we're going to cover up this UFO thing. Yeah. It yeah. just you know, it doesn't make any sense in a geopolitical uh, framework. Well, statistically, going back across time, if there's been dozens of crashes in the last 80 years, shouldn't all of the world be full of bits of UFO sticking out of various hills and forests over the last like two millennia? <laughs> the, you know, yeah, well, yeah, there would have to be, stuff. yes, I guess like all the previous ones as well, unless the aliens simply arrived in 1933 for some reason, because uh, I don't know, we were broadcasting TV and they, they just shot over really quick because the TV wouldn't have reached them by then, but you know, who knows? Maybe it was the the nuclear weapons blowing up that created ripples in the space time continuum, and they came because of that. But then that wasn't 1933 either. So uh, yeah, I mean, like when you start digging into it, it doesn't make any sense. But the excuse is going to be that oh, all those answers yeah. will be in this secret documentation. Yeah. But yeah, they're not going to be. They're not going to explain why why you know Russia and China and Chechnya and the Ukraine. Uh, you know, aren't telling people about this and how, why it didn't leak, you know, why all this stuff was going on in Italy. And then, you know, there's this massive turnover, the Mussolini is hung uh, uh, and is executed. And then other people come in and they're all like, oh, this, 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 this UFO, we should just give it to the Americans because that's the sensible thing to do. And we shall never talk about <laughs> it again. You know, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's, it's like a bad science fiction story. And, and I gather what, what what Grush said was was actually vetted by the military, right? And they decided well, there was nothing. <laughs> or, or is that not is that not accurate? Well, no, it's it's accurate. But when you say vetted, that kind of sounds like vetted for accuracy. Okay. And it's it's they not looked over it before he put it out and decided he could go ahead. Yes, it's vetted for lack of truth, essentially, and it's vetted. They don't want him telling things that are true to people because they don't want them telling secrets. So it's not just like, you know, they, they, they want to prevent classified information coming out. So they look at what he said. So if he says something that's not classified, that's fine. If he says something that's a blatant lie, that's also fine. If it says something that's just like a ridiculous misinterpretation of the facts that has no bearing on reality, that's also fine too. You can say that. That's not classified. So that's all that it means. Yeah. It, it means that there's no true classified information in there. Which, again, is just such a clear and obvious, like, saying we have recovered alien bodies as part of a crash recovery secret. program, which is top secret. Like, everything I said before the program is top secret would also be top secret. It's got to be like, the most, the highest level of secrecy, it. surely, if, yeah. if, it, if it's true. Saying that we recovered bodies cannot possibly, cannot possibly be not classified if any other part of the program at all yeah. is classified it's just not yeah. how these things work it's not and, and and i know that from like investigating like some of the ufo things the ufo videos uh class the way classification works in in Amer the american military is that if they do an investigation uh that involves classified components then the results of that investigation are classified so if they're doing, you know, an investigation of the, these UFOs to, to try to determine if, if which is top secret, then the the results of things like you know, it had an odd, odd isotope ratio would be classified. Yeah. Because yeah. if they're they're reverse engineering foreign technology, you don't want the Chinese to know that you've just that you discovered yeah. that they're using like terahertz waveforms uh, with metamaterials. Yeah. You don't <laughs> you don't want them to know that the the that the uh, super anti-radar uh, strange isotope ratio of aluminum yeah. has been discovered. So you, you know, that would be classified information, uh, and yet he's telling it to the world. Yeah. Well, I can give you an example. 20 years ago, to use the expression GPS denies when talking about um, fighter jets and, and, and things having to go and navigate in, in theatre and stuff, 
writing GPS denied into a document increased the classification of the document. Mm. Stupid and silly, and, and because at the time it was hugely sort of sensitive that GPS could be jammed or spoofed. Nowadays, it's obvious. You can buy stuff on the internet that spoofs GPS. But just putting the words GPS denied into a document raised its classification. The idea that the statement, we recovered some alien bodies. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, nah, that's, that's fine. It's, well, well, it's fine. Yeah. I don't buy it. No, I think that probably falls into one of the other categories, not like uh, an unclassified thing, but uh, a, a fabulation, you know, something that is either exactly. false uh, because he made it up or false because he, he heard it from someone who made it up or misunderstood. Something, you know, it's not true. And, but, you know, the excuse that's coming from the UFO people is that the people who are doing the declassification, who are doing this vetting, don't have the security clearance. Yeah. Yeah. Which another is another ridiculous thing. It's, it's like if you've got anything that's classified enough to not be, uh, you know, the, the, this this office of declassification won't have heard of it, then you can just tell the world about it because you can get their permission because they won't have heard about it and you can tell everybody about it. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. That's not how it works. And it, and he's claiming to know more than this than the UAP task force, right? Or Aero as it as it's now it's now known. So. So he is above that level, which obviously people who are, you know, UFO yeah. um, enthusiasts will say, you know, or oh, of course they're going to be covering it up or it's been covered up and they're not being told. That's why he's compl why he's put this complaint in because the information's not getting to Aero. It, it just seems strange that a, a program looking into it doesn't know as much as he knows. Yeah, well, that I mean, it's kind of based on a real thing in that uh, there's these two types of classifications, Title 10 and Title 50. And uh, Title 50 is is kind of more broad reaching. It kind of encompasses like, uh, I think, like civilian bodies that are contracted to the, to the government. And whereas Title 10 is just more kind of like things within the government. I'm not sure the exact distinction, but it's Title 10 is a lot better. So you can get more access to these special programs, whereas Title uh, Title 10 isn't isn't quite as, as far reaching and apparently arrow and sean kirkpatrick the head of arrow only have this title 10 clearance whereas since this guy was in the national reconnaissance office he has title 50 apparently though he liaised with the uap task force but i guess he just could, couldn't tell any them anything about this super secret stuff uh, but like i said earlier there's thousands of other people who have title 50 clearance and you just go and ask one of those congress go and ask one of those yeah so I want to I want to move on a little bit and talk about a little bit of the wider context mix. So you've been in this UAP space for a while. Is mm -hmm. this story from David Grush is it is this unprecedented with this military man coming forward and making these bold claims or is it is it just the latest cab off the rank is it just the latest person in the cycle? What's what should we expect given the the horror, uh, the historical excuse me precedent because we've had people yeah. in the past like Lou Elizondo we've had people other people making wild claims so you know Bob Lazar we, although he wasn't in the military I believe I, I found this article of a guy called Dan Sherman who said his official job was to talk to aliens we've obviously had Lou Elizondo who's made claims that he was head of this ATIP um, you know program within the Pentagon looking at ufos what, is there anything new here or is this just a rerun of elizondo well i mean i i think it's both both something new and something old there's always been like people coming forward claiming to be whistleblowers there was a thing called the disclosure project uh which i think started back around 2000 where this guy stephen greer who was a bit less uh, eccentric back then than he is now still fairly eccentric back then like gathered a bunch of people together including some of the players in you know, what we see today, Danny Sheenan, the lawyer who was involved in this back then, two, uh, 20 years ago. And he got people who said, you know, I worked at NASA, I worked in the Pentagon, and I saw the alien bodies, I saw the bases on the moon, I saw these alien spacecraft, and I'm prepared to testify to Congress. But nothing ever had came of it. You, know, you can go back further in time to the 70s and the, the even to the 50s. There are individual people, uh, military people, who's, who are being lauded as whistleblowers who are going to tell the truth behind the program nothing ever comes of it because the excuse is that they were like bought off or paid off or threatened or something like that but you know they, they just they just their stories 
fall apart when scrutinised. And they seem to have pre-prepped that, don't they? Saying he's being threatened, that he's scared, and we need to get this out quickly. And it, it feels like that's been pre-prepped. But let's let's see how let's see where it goes. Yeah, well, we don't know really what's what's happened there, and it, it, I don't know. Maybe maybe something did happen. Sure. Uh, we know that he scrubbed the internet of his his web presence, like all his LinkedIn pages and his his realtor pages and things like that were carefully removed uh, without almost any trace uh, before they went through this. Because so he, I think he might be genuinely concerned yeah. uh, because of all the attention it's going to get, course, and yeah. you know perhaps there are people who don't want him to talk about these secret programs because they are actually real secret programs to do with reverse engineering foreign technology and you know he shouldn't be talking about it so there could be something there uh or maybe he maybe he's, to a certain degree he's a bit paranoid about about this type of thing because if you if he thinks this alien thing is true then he can certainly imagine that people would want to to keep it covered up yeah. but yeah he he's it's kind of the latest of a long line of people. I think it's a bit different in that, you know, this is one of the few cases where we're actually getting some congressional involvement. And we've had this kind of build up to it to this point, like getting like this, this original New York Times story, mm -hmm. uh, and then getting the, the UAP task force, and then the, the AIMSOG task force, which was its successor. And then that was renamed Arrow. Uh, and they're actually doing things, and NASA is doing things, uh, and and we're having all these these congressional and Senate hearings. So it's a, it's a bit of a different environment, yeah. but it's not really unprecedented. This yeah. is this is part of the cycle of ufology. Does he does he have a higher security clearance, or is this is this the first person who's gone under oath? Those are both things that that people who are UFO UFO enthusiasts have have kind of I've seen put out there on Twitter. You know, this is a really high level guy and he's gone under oath. Now you've got Eric Weinstein saying, you know, he's gone under oath. So something big's going to happen yeah. now. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, like he can go under oath and say that he's been told that he's, he's been told things and you know, that's not like, it's not like lying or anything. Cause he's probably been told things, but, but yeah, he, I think he does have a higher security, cl uh, security clearance than most, if not all of the, the previous whistleblowers. So that, in itself is interesting however is is not like used it to actually produce any evidence and in fact he doesn't have any evidence himself he's he didn't work on the program so he's not like he's whistleblowing you know, some top secret program that he worked on he's whistleblowing things that people told him that he assumes a top secret because they would be if if they were true yeah yeah ramsey any comment on that Just still how <clears throat> very sort of confused and strange it is. If, if you're going to if you're going to remove your ability to ever have any clearances ever again, <laughs> which is what the guy's done, um, you probably would uh, bring the actual evidence with you. I don't know. It's just the whole thing is so so strange um from but he, he retired though i mean it didn't seem like he wanted to have a or wants to have a, a future career in this like i think he he left the military perhaps because you know he was like saying i'm gonna blow the whistle and then he either got fired or decided to leave uh he started a brief career as a realtor in colorado and now he says what he's going to do in, in the, the the interview in la parision he said that uh he's going to start a non-profit investigating ufos hmm. and you know so to say he's thinking he's going to leverage this into a, a career because yeah. it's like you know something he's super interested in and he's got all this special knowledge and all this attention so is he going to start a, a non-profit organization as his, is his next career so i don't think he's that concerned about losing his security clearance it is an interesting career path to go from sitting on this explosive earth-shattering thing to being a low-level real estate agent for a little bit and then to come back and be like okay no this was important i'm coming back to it seems a little bit odd i don't know exactly what the career path that was there or how much overlap there was but but that feels a a little bit odd to me so so mick if if there's so little to this story there's no evidence being presented wh why is it getting such major pickup i, I want to split that into into two parts first in the media and second of all in government in you know in hearings in the congress so Maybe if we start with the media, why why is this getting picked up by 
the New York Times with the initial piece, the, the, the glowing orbs and black money? Why is this getting picked up by the debrief? Why are people putting out these stories so regularly? Well, uh, UFOs sell papers, uh, I think is part of that. And UFOs are also a little bit of a taboo subject. Mm. And so the what happened with the 2017, December 2017 story in the New York Times was that the the UFO enthusiasts, uh, Leslie Keen and Ralph Blumenthal, yeah. managed to craft an acceptable story for the New York Times. They they worked with other people in in this this community, which is called the Invisible College. You know, people who are working to to promote disclosure behind the scenes, the Invisible College. And they worked with like Chris Mellon, who was someone who who was previously in government, and he was coordinating with people in the Pentagon to get these videos released. And Lou Elizondo was, you know, planning on leaving his job at uh, at uh, in the Pentagon because he thought that disclosure wasn't happening fast enough. And they all crafted this nice story and a package of video releases that, and the New York Times bought it and published it and that started this whole chain of events uh, other media outlets did did stories more videos were released uh, public interest grew um the when public interest is high in things then politicians take note it's easy to get legislation passed uh, you can use the high public interest interest to kind of drive things by just framing it as you know a security concern or a safety of flight concern, and yeah. you get this legislation, you get these 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 groups, and now you, we're kind of in the second wave, where not not a lot has happened for a while. They've established these investigation groups. Arrow is the ultimate investigation group that's looking into it, and they're just like. Yeah, well, that one's a plane. Yeah, that one's a balloon. That one you can't really tell what that one is. Um, this one's a, a silver sphere, and it looks like it's moving fast, but it's not really. That we heard about silver spheres that were moving oddly, but yeah, you know, we don't really have enough evidence. So nothing's really going on there. That so they're not really happy about it, and I think now it's kind of time to escalate it to the the whistleblower yeah. stage. And uh, they tried to sell the story to the New York Times. I, I have... uh, they tried to sell the story to the Washington Post, but they uh, they kind of turned them down or they didn't have enough time to to do it. I have to say, I did see quite a lot of red flags with this. So I watched, I, I read the article in the debrief and I watched the video and I was kind of shocked by kind of how little there there was there. But I also mm -hmm. saw a lot of red flags with this. Um, is it Ke Keen and, Bo and Blumenthal, particularly uh, Keen or, or Keen? So, Keen, yeah, so Keen, Keen. So she's being presented as as very sort of, you know, authoritative on this subject because she, yeah. she put out this this piece and then there was some level of, you know, some level of truth to it that there were people in the Pentagon working on these types of things. Yeah. But then when you go and dig into this lady, it seems that oh, yeah. she's made a career of trying to make UFOs have a reasonable face. In fact, she's she's overtly said that. And you look into the backstory of, of this lady. She's very, very close with Lou Elizondo. She's written some very interesting, strange things in the past about, you know, past life and do we live on beyond death? It, she has sued NASA um, for potentially finding a bell-shaped, this bell-shaped craft in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, which is again, another piece of, mm -hmm. UFA law, uh, UFO law about maybe this deglocker, you know, transported itself to Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. She seems like not potentially the most reliable uh, of sources on this. I don't know what you what you feel about that regarding getting this stuff into the media. Yeah, I mean, her focus, which she's talked about quite openly, I think, is is like promoting uh, disclosure, promoting like, you know, investigation of UFOs. And she deliberately doesn't talk about certain things. Yeah. And if you, if you go back to the first story in the New York Times, yeah. uh, the ATIP program, which is what they talked about, was actually kind of a, a nickname for a program called ORSAP. And the ORSAP program was run by Robert Bigelow, who was this this, this millionaire in Las Vegas, uh, who's also very interested in the afterlife. But he, at the time, owned a place called Skinwalker Ranch, 
which you probably you may have seen on TV. I don't know if you watch that type of TV, but it's it's like this this supernatural place where you know ghosts and UFOs and weird things happen. And there's there's a TV series about it now, very sensationalist thing. But back then, uh, Robert Bigelow was investigating UFOs and and ghosts and things, uh, poltergeists on Skinwalker Ranch, and he somehow via a convoluted pathway persuaded Senator Harry Reid to sponsor legislation uh, to set up a program to investigate Skinwalker Ranch. And that's essentially what the ORSAP program actually was. It was it was presented, it was kind of hidden, its true purpose was hidden uh, to the Pentagon and to a certain degree to, to Congress by framing it as an investigation of the future of aerospace and like looking into like warp drives and things like that. But it was really just about investigating Skinwalker Ranch. And that was the entire motivation for actually doing it. There's a whole book about it called Skinwalkers at the Pentagon, which is written by the people involved quite unapologetically uh, describing what actually happened. So this, this program that Leslie Keen wrote about in the initial New York Times was essentially a supernatural investigation yeah. of a haunted ranch yeah. disguised as a search for UFOs. And and she sort of fed into that, hasn't she? She's sort of given it credibility as if it was just this very serious, sober look at, you know, threats in our airspace. And it wasn't. It was this crazy yeah. program looking at werewolves and, and psychic abilities and flying orbs and beaver dinosaurs, I've heard, and all sorts of nonsense. Yeah, it's uh, she didn't include a lot of things in in the story, like all the stuff about Skinwalker Ranch that wasn't mentioned at all, even though that was you know essentially the uh, the 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 reason that the program existed at all. That's the actual reason why they started this program, and it was a very large part of what they actually did in the program. So she didn't really include that. But then there were also like apparently it was a bunch of other stuff that was taken out that the New York Times uh, thought was a bit too too woo. Mm. So you know even 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 there like you know the the story that would ended up being published was kind of a sanitized version of of what she considered to be reality, and she'd been censoring herself to to, to get to even that stage. So it's. Uh, there's a lot going on under the surface. Like another one of the prime movers here is is Gary Nolan, and he he said at one point, uh, you know, in ufology, you know, we stay away from the woo uh, because we don't want to go there. You know, the woo means paranormal. But it says, but we know that the woo is just around the corner. And this is something that's very, very true in ufology. You know, a lot of these people who are involved in it yeah. uh, essentially believe in some kind of paranormal explanation. They believe in things like the skinwalker uh, ranch being not haunted, but like perhaps a interdimensional portal where tricksters from another dimension are coming over to pretend to be UFOs and to trick us into doing things. And this is something the Pentagon should investigate. There's a very strange history behind where we got to where we are today. And, and the reason I the reason I bring this up is not to kind of shoot the messenger. I, the the story is kind of weak enough as it is, but in this story again. Kian has failed to mention that Grush, uh, Grush is going around talking about strange things about quantum mechanics, talking about alien bodies, talking about this story is kept evolving. And yet none yeah. of those more woo type aspects are again in the original in the original um, article. So it feels yeah. very much like a rerun, a sanitize, sanitization that she that she did in 2017 she's just pulling the same trick again to a certain degree but uh she said that she didn't talk about the bodies with yeah. grush okay okay she says that like i mean it, it, it's not really clear exactly what she means by that but it sounds like he didn't even tell her yeah that there were bodies like she is writing the definitive story for him that she wanted to sell to the new york times and the washington post ended up like going with the debrief yeah. but he uh she didn't get out of him something that he just blurted out on camera later when talking to to his friend Ross Colthart. It doesn't it doesn't really add up, does it? And it and it feels like it, not. it feels like she's being absurdly credulous after the previous story turned out to be very much a sanitization and very much part of the actual true story. It doesn't it doesn't feel like lessons have been learned. 
Yeah, she's she's a true believer. I mean, she wants to push the narrative forward, but you know, she's um, she's also um, a bit overly credulous. I think she believes there's there's something to this. You know, you you see them talk. They did an interview with a debrief uh, with Chrissy Newton like uh, like a few days ago, both Blumenthal and and Keen, and they try to be you know as journalistic as possible, but. Uh, they do definitely have their preconceptions and their biases and their pre-existing beliefs, which are influencing what they do. I've only got a couple more questions. Uh, are we good for 15 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that, is that okay? Because I, I just want yeah. to be respectful of, of people's time. So in terms of the politics, Mick, why, why do you think people like, you know, Senator Rubio, Senator Gillibrand, why are they, why are they listening to people like this? Is it is it that public pressure? Is it true belief, or, or what? What's going on? Does it all come back to this small group of people every time? You know, your Elizondos, your Christopher Mellons, your Tom yeah. DeLongs. Is it every single time one of these stories comes up? It, can we trace it back to this small group of people? Pretty much all the time. Uh, quite frequently, I think so. And I think they tell a good story and they have people who give good testimony. Like before, um, before Grush was the, the person that they would parade around, they would parade around uh, David Fravor, mm. uh, who saw the Tic Tac UFO. And then, you know, they're parading around uh, Ryan Graves, the pilot who uh, didn't actually see a UFO, but a lot of his friends did. And he saw them on the radar and, and on his infrared camera. Uh, and, and now we've got this guy and you know, this is kind of the same people uh, are, are right there along with him uh, telling the story like Lou Elizondo and Leslie Keane and, uh, and the older people like you know, Hal Putoff and uh, Jacques Vallée are there in the background as this kind of invisible college of people. But, you know, people like uh, Rubio, um, you know, they, they're politicians. The Rubio uh, was the head of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, I believe, or something like that. And so it was his job essentially to address that issue, and so he he did. Uh, but he so he but he had people talking to him. He had people persuade him to do things. He he, I think he helped get some legislation passed that was written by uh, Chris Mellon. Mm. Yeah, because like you know he's he's the guy who used to be in government and he talks to them, and yeah you know, they talk to people like Jacques Vallée and they get convinced. They talk to people like Ryan Graves and they get convinced. I think Jilly Brand probably talk to the pilots because she talks a lot about how you know her concern is that you know it could be a danger it could be a foreign adversary it could, should yeah. be something that, that we look into uh so she's been convinced that the, there's an issue and so she's she's pushing these things but you know it's 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 all based on this very very tenuous set of evidence and and this this is what it feels to me is that or, or at least my read on it for for what it's worth is that it's a mix of these true believers. You've got your, your, you know, your Lou Elizondo's, your Christopher Mellon's, these type of people who really believe something's going on potentially with with UFOs and aliens and what have you. And then that kind of gets wrapped up with genuine concerns about things in the airspace and the development of technologies in other countries. And one sort of levers the other. I've I've seen the reason I say this is because I've seen something very similar in discussing the the lab leak origins of COVID, where if you challenge some of the conspiracy theories that are going around, people will say, well, are you not interested in finding getting to the bottom of this? This is really important. We need to talk about legislation of, you know, messing with viruses in labs and these kind of things. So you use the real world problem to kind of make headway on the more woo stuff that you want to talk about. That's what it yeah. feels like to me that there's this this mashup between weird conspiracies and people who want to look at werewolves and talk about paranormal things and, you know, psychic possession of soldiers in Russia and being able to do these kind of odd things. Then with more serious people who are concerned about genuine things that are going on in the world, like things in the airspace and technological development. Is is that kind of where we are, that we've got this kind of horrible mashup of true believers and genuine concerns? Yeah, yeah, certainly uh, there's this definite overlap there because, you know, UFOs, 
as UFOs is a genuine concern. If a pilot sees see something in the sky that they can't identify, then you would need to figure out how to identify it. And if there's a blip on the radar that's doing something really odd, we've got to figure out, is that a real blip on the radar or is it something going going wrong? And so that these are definitely things that need to be looked into. And, and of course, there's like, you know, a lot more drone technology and autonomous vehicles now. So there's, there's issues there. And then there's the very slight possibility that we we are being watched by an alien species, which you know you can that would come out in the mix, I think, if you're investigating these other things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's 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 all being kind of uh, kind of tainted, I think, by this this kind of obsession with with aliens and the supernatural as as a priority. Uh, the people who are pushing this like uap investigations they're all people who think that the aliens are real they're convinced already they don't need the evidence they they need evidence to convince other people and they need evidence to force the government to reveal what they know so you've got like uh, a, a a uap task force for example like staffed by people like jay stratton and travis taylor who end up going on the ancient aliens like mm -hmm. lecture circuit? I saw them talking at the ancient aliens conference in Pasadena mm -hmm. uh, a few months ago. It's it's very strange. And Travis Taylor, like the lead scientist of the UAP task force, is a guy who appears on TV on the Ancient Aliens show and on the Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, you know, she's another strange little uh, connection there. That Skinwalker Ranch was the thing that kind of started all this, and now it's got this TV show, and they're the head scientist of the uap task force is there you know all mixing together all this stuff is not healthy we should be focusing on actual technological and systemic issues rather than searching for aliens it's very strange that these uh that there's so many of these people in in, in high level positions and and in the government it, it just it, it blows my mind to be honest um yeah, yeah, yeah just... people are people are humans yeah of course yeah <laughs> which uh except for the aliens like people are humans <laughs> and except for the hybrids you... well something i've seen recently is was well, something i kind of realized it's just kind of the scale of i don't know like a, a polite way of putting it but uh like inadequate skills and practices within mm. the government or ineptitude yeah you you look at these these videos and where they're coming from is just people making these ridiculous mistakes yeah. like this green triangle video yeah. that was out like last year was you know mistake made by people on the boat it, different people on the boat were like using this this equipment like uh it was a night vision thing with a camera attached to it that made stars and planes look like like triangles because it's a little bit out of focus and they didn't realize this and they thought that stars were drones and they actually we have audio of them on video saying like i'm looking at three drones mm -hmm. and what they're seeing is three stars which you can identify mm -hmm. exactly because you can see other stars in the scene and you can see exactly what they are then the uap task force has you know put out uh, photos of what they said was a drone when it's actually clearly just mm -hmm. a plane and they didn't realize this. And you know, it's something else that people on the boat said, this is a drone. And so they've gone along with this interpretation. They're not really questioned it. There's a lack of kind of technical ability in these, mm. these task forces to actually identify things. The, mm. the, uh, Sean Kirkpatrick showed this, this video at the NASA hearing of these three dots moving around. And it was, it was the camera moving. And someone asked him, what are the dots in the background? And he says, oh, those are stars. Like as if the stars wouldn't move when the camera moved, because these was these were fixed positions, and he you know he didn't realize that that was physically impossible because he kind of I guess lacks the technical ability, or you know perhaps he just like misread it in the moment. But it, all these things don't give me a sense of yeah. of confidence in our our authorities who are actually looking into even the serious aspects of this. Yeah. So as as we wrap this up, why why do you think this Grosh claim is is coming forward now is it is it just like you said that the environment is different now that people want this there's lots of hearings there's lots of interest and now is the time to 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 make this claim is it because there's new protection for whistleblowers is it because so, as some people have said lou elizondo has a new book coming out what what why is it this week why is it now do you think 
I, I think several of those those factors, but uh, I think this is something that's been in the works for a while, and it seems like they had to rush it out for some reason. Like uh, his name was leaked uh, to various people, and people were investigating this like a few weeks ago. Uh, his name was actually accidentally said by Danny Sheenhan, the uh, the lawyer of, who's part of the Invisible College, and his name was mentioned as uh, I think he pronounced it incorrectly, which kind of saved him, but. Uh, uh, you know his his name's been floating around, and I think people were getting ready to write stories about what was going on, and so they had to rush to get this story out. So they probably just had like a couple of weeks to get all their ducks in a row and put it out. But it is kind of the culmination of a number of things, including the whistleblower protection, because you know he probably wouldn't talk unless he had some kind of protection, or and they wouldn't do the story like this unless they had this framework of protection where they could not say certain things and only talk to certain people and have this legal protection. Uh, but it, you know, it's something they've been working on for there's a while. A, there's an interesting tension. There's an interesting tension there, isn't there? Because obviously you want whistleblowers to feel protected coming forward, but it also, if you have this group inside the government that's you know, absolutely convinced that these strange things are going on and we need to look into them and we need money for this and and what have you, then it also gives a framework for for nonsense to be put out there and and gain traction. So there's a weird there's a weird tension there, is there not? Yeah, I don't I don't know. Like uh ultimately like when people put stuff out as whistleblowers, they kind of have to back it up. Mm. Uh, I don't think you can really just go with like the word of somebody saying something, especially for such a big thing as this. So, you know, maybe n nonsense will come out, but you know, one would hope that eventually it gets figured out what the real situation is. So the final question I had is summing all of this up. Where do you expect this to go? I, I, I get a strong sense of where you think it will go. Uh, and what do you expect to come out of this? So, a lot of people are saying, you know, because this is a high level person, it's under oath testimony. There must be some kernel of truth there. There must be there must be something there, even if it's not an alien shaped hole. There must be there must be something yeah. that he's got a gripe about. And and there is something there. What what do you what do you think about that? And where do you think this might go in the, uh, I, in the future? I think probably what will happen is that. Uh it will get looked into by congress uh in secret you know behind behind in secret session like classified yeah. uh hearings and they will discover or be told by the military who the people they ask in the military that you know they these are not reverse engineering programs of alien craft such things do not exist we do have secret reverse engineering programs of foreign technology that we've, we've been trying really hard not to tell anybody about and some of those are super sensitive like this chinese jet that we captured back in 72 or whatever i'm just making an example there. that's <laughs> not a real example uh, uh and they've been trying to keep things secret and they recognize that a bunch of people have somehow become become convinced that these are alien things but uh, they can't do anything about it because it's, it's classified so can you please just drop the whole thing congress and congress will go mm, yes national security so we'll just say well, yeah, we've been reassured. We looked into it and there's nothing to it, uh, but we can't give you any details. <laughs> so it's going to be very frustrating uh, for everybody concerned because we won't get any details because these are classified programs, but we'll get some assurances that they're not aliens, but it'll just reek of a cover-up. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, that's what everyone it will, is it will, it will say. feed the machine anyway, right? It'll yeah. feed the monster yeah. anyway. And and so everybody involved will be able to walk away from, from it with their heads held high, saying, like, you know, we did our best, but the government is, is covering it up, and things will just continue. Um, some people will be disillusioned because nothing actually happened, and then they'll think, well, perhaps there was nothing to it. Some people will, will be emboldened and saying, well, you know, this guy came forward, obviously telling the truth, and now there's a big cover-up, so we have to fight even harder. And so the cycle will continue. Yeah, that sounds like it's going to be incredibly, incredibly frustrating. Ramsey, any any comments on that? I've got and I've got a section for any other business. If you've got anything else you would like to to comment on, well, just just confirmation from um, my opinion on uh, classifications and stuff. That certainly, if it all turns out that it's all completely fabricated and it doesn't exist, then they'll say there are no top secret programs doing this stuff. 
And if it turns out there are a bunch of top secret programs doing this stuff, then they will say <laughs> it's all been fabricated. There are no top secret programs doing this stuff. So the conclusion, as you were saying, will definitely be the same. And uh, if if it really all does exist, it'll have to come down to a Snowden-esque big dump of data on a DVD somewhere from someone who's run away to a different country and then stuck it all on the internet. So um, come on, Louis Ando, do it properly. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get that data. I want to. <laughs> I want everything out in the open. Uh, I I want I want the. Of course. Yeah, you know, I want to. Oh well, unless it really is jeopardizing national security, but I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that could be released that wouldn't jeopardize national security. We have excessive uh, security classifications. It'll take them some work to declassify things, but there's no reason why they they can't ultimately do that with a lot of like these UFO cases. And, and even to a certain degree with uh, these older reverse engineering programs. I mean, this is this is the bottom line, right? Isn't it? We, we want everything out there. We would like to know the truth about everything. And, uh, you know, if they can get it out there, that would be fantastic. Just at the moment, there's no evidence to say it's aliens. But I guess we'll wait and we'll see where this goes. Mick, yeah. Ramsey, thank you so much for taking the time today. As ever, I really, really appreciate it. Um, we'll go Ramsey first. Ramsey, is there anywhere you want to send people to uh, learn more about this topic or what you're doing? Or are we just going to uh, leave it to Mick? Yeah, exactly. I, I dip into Twitter every now and again for my sins. So I'll see you all there. <laughs> I will put your, uh, Until, will put your hand on. Aren't we all going to shift to what, whatever the other one's called? Blue sky. Blue something. Yeah. Um, are you going to be um, uh, D Elon Musking yourself at some point uh, and, and shifting over to Jack Dorsey's new thing, Mick? That would be great. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> okay. I'm certainly not an Elon Musk fan. Uh, but right now I'm kind of stuck with Twitter and the uh, Blue Sky. Yeah, yeah. I'm at Mick West on Blue Sky if people want to follow me there, but I'm not posting there yet. I guess I should get some kind of dual posting thing so I can transfer over. I'm at Mick West everywhere. Good. I, I will have to invite me and Sam. I don't think we have any invites to Blue Sky yet. <laughs> nope. I'll yeah. see if I've see if yeah, I've got one. Yeah, yeah, shoot, shoot them over. Special, Mick, to get an invite. Then. I will. I will make sure uh, all of Mick's links are down in the description. He's done a lot of um, excellent interviews this week as well on this topic. Um, so those will all be down in the description, as ever. Um, Mick has joined me on TikTok. I saw a couple of months back. Mick, how are you finding TikTok? I hate it but use it because the kids like it I, I went in and then i went out i just I did one video i was doing a response video to a uh another tiktok video and i thought i'd do it in tiktok format because it was a relatively short thing and it was kind of fun but uh i'm just not really not really that into it i'm too old too old for tiktok <laughs> uh, one one more thing i will be on tv on the news nation this the the channel where yeah. that broke the story uh news nation i'll be on tv at ooh, i guess 9 30 eastern time yeah i think that's right is this with uh, seven, elizabeth no, Varg 10 30 elizabeth Vargas yeah again. no it's, it's going to be with the, the the journalist who's on with elizabeth Vargas. Uh, i can't remember his name offhand but uh i'll be on at some point that day. Let, wait, let me just see when when, if when you, that actually if you is. shoot me the if you shoot me the link over 7 30 uh that's 7 30 7 30 pacific 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 time 7 30 yeah. pacific and if you send me uh, yeah. a link over for where it'll be i'll put that down in the yeah it's a it's a cable tv sh uh oh, right, okay. thing so there's you can't actually share it via a link it, it'll, it'll appear on youtube afterwards but if anybody happens to watch news nation then I did actually also have my AOB for me because normally Sam, I completely let you down and never have yeah, you any, never you never have anything for the any other business the last yeah. minute every time and I'm like ah I didn't prepare anything so I was going to ask Mick what your thoughts are on um, AGI and if AI is going to kill us before the aliens do there we go there we go that'll close well us that's out. a big a big topic to <laughs> <laughs> one minute Mick one minute. Got 30, 30 seconds 30 seconds Mick uh I think yeah uh, general artificial general intelligence is a a concerning development because it's so rapid in its growth and we don't know exactly what it's doing under the hood or what might go wrong and it's it's getting better and better at a near exponential rate and I don't think it's going to be very long before there's some type of uh, autonomous leak of AI that causes some kind of problems. I don't think we're, we're quite going to go jump straight to Skynet, but I think there are, there is actually going to be issues in the future. 
and it's not going to stop. I and mean, that's the big thing that, you know, I, I keep telling people about AI. It's not going to, this isn't like what we've got. It's like, you know, for writers, the fact that uh, chat GPT four can write quite well, isn't your biggest problem. It's what's going to be with chat GPT 11 or, you know, writer's companion number 95. Yeah. yeah. It's going to keep going better and better and better. And people's uh, outputs are going to be, more and more uh, redundant or reliant upon machine augmentation. So it's a big change for the world. So you think it's going to make humans stupider rather than kill them? Is that the concern? Or do you think it? I, yeah, I don't think so. It, will, it will change people somewhat. I think, you know, people already rely on like, looking things up on the internet. Uh, and yeah, I, I think like if we can kind of structure it in a way where it's essentially an extension of our brains, you know, not like an actual brain link type thing, well, maybe a brain link, but not like, a, you know, transferring your consciousness or anything like that. But, you know, if it's, it's a tool you can use, then, yeah, but I don't know, it's 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 going very rapid and uh, it's not going to be that long before it's smarter than the vast majority of people. Yeah, I saw the uh, something like an ex-VP of business development at Google or something was interviewed and said, uh, don't have any kids until we figure out what's going on, which I think is a bit of an extreme view. It is a bit extreme. <laughs> a bit panicky, that one. Um, so, yeah, definitely there's uh, quite a range of opinions on how good or bad or ugly. Yeah, get. yeah it's, it's increasingly going to be uh, more and more apparent uh, of an issue. I think a lot of people haven't really got up to speed with just how how significant the issue actually is. There's, there's lots of you know very real issues to actually deal with. But it's it's a big thing, you know. In the in the writing community, I mean, my wife's a writer. I write books. Uh, people are getting concerned. You know, there's there's people are getting made redundant. Uh, artists, you know, the the artwork that's being produced is quite spectacular. You know, you, you want to get a, a representation of something. Excuse me for for your website. You can just type in the description. Like I wanted to do a uh, an arty bit of an arty representation of some gray birds and i just typed a few quotes and i got this lovely watercolor of some gray birds <laughs> and don't need to hire an artist for it yeah it's definitely going to change things my only other uh, any other business because i need to let you guys go was i didn't realize um that eric seems to be banging the uap drum because he thinks that the aliens will basically prove his theory of everything the geometric, yeah the geometric unit oh, i didn't realize that either <laughs> so so he put out a quote the other day I'll, I'll 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 link you up where he basically said um you know physics has been stagnant for 50 years and mm. the aliens definitely aren't coming if they're using our stale old understanding of physics which i pretty much read as well if they were using if they're aliens yeah. about it's because they're as smart as i am um, so, which was an interesting <laughs> twist on the the, uh, the UAP saga this week. I'm yeah, about so Eric's always complaining that physics isn't going fast <laughs> enough, and that's pretty much all he talks about. So, well, he, he always throws in uh, Jeffrey Epstein and a few other things there, and he's got a little uh, a little trench of of conspiracy theories that he likes to to put out there. Exactly. And he'll talk about the history of I don't know, was anti gravity research or just gravity research. Yeah. He's got a few things that he he repeats, but uh, yeah, I don't know. he's uh, he, he's at least expressing uh, notes of caution about the UFO yeah, yeah. story and the whistleblower. So I guess that's that's not bad. It's as it's, a, it's as good as you could hope for, I think. Mick, thank you very much again. Really, really appreciate it. Ramsey. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Have thank a you. wonderful weekend, and uh, I'll do a little bit of editing now, and I'll get this out in the next couple of hours. So. Oh, lovely. Thanks a lot. Sounds and I'll good. talk your, your Yorkshire accent came back out there, Mick. That was, uh, <laughs> I, was I like I like to hear that. I enjoyed hearing that. Right. Eva, I'll let you go. go. <laughs> right, I'll see you. <laughs> see you later, chaps. Cheers, guys. Bye. 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 I want to know what you think, because you're the scholars of enlightenment that I do this for. So please take a moment, if you wish, to let me know down in the comment section. And if you like this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, setting up notifications, and sharing this video more widely. I can't tell you how much these simple actions help me out and how much I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being scientific. Thanks for being bad.